Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. Today we will start a series of videos in which we will talk all about cell signaling. Once all the videos are uploaded, you can find them under cell signaling playlist. This playlist will be especially important for AP Bio students as it will cover unit four. Cell signaling is nothing but cell communication where cells communicate with one another by sending and receiving signals. This video and the next few ones will introduce what are the different ways cells communicate, after which we will look closely at what happens once the cells receive the signals. As you can see here, cells communicate over short distance and long distance. In short distance, we will start at cell-to-cell -cell contact. The cells are so close that they communicate simply by either having junctions between them or recognizing one another. In today's video, we will focus on cell-cell contact, cell junctions. We will see two examples gap junctions and plasmodesmata. So let's take a look together and then answer our question of the day. Let's start with plant cells. As you can see here, we have two plant cells and we can clearly see that they both have cell walls. Now, because plants have cell walls, does this mean that they can't communicate? The answer is no, because these cells will still be able to communicate with one another because of the presence of holes on the cell wall that allow materials to be exchanged between the cells. These channels are called plasmodesmata, singular plasmodesma. Plasmodesmata are lined with the plasma membrane and they're filled with the cytoplasm. Small and water-soluble molecules can move freely by passive diffusion. Just like plasmodesmata in plant cells, gap junctions found in animal cells, they're also known as communicating junctions, they're cytoplasmic channels between cells that of course also allow the transfer of ions and small molecules. Gap junctions are formed by six membrane proteins, and when these membrane proteins come together, they form a channel. Once that channel forms, it aligns in such a way with the other cell's channel that they form doorways between the cells. And when the proteins align, they leave a narrow extracellular gap, and hence the name gap junctions. Finally, it's time for our question of the day. Which of the following best explains how plants can move small water-soluble molecules across adjacent cells? Pause the video, try to answer the question, and then hit play so that we can answer it together. In a question like this, it's straightforward. We only have two options anyways. It's either plasmodesmata or gap junctions. And because this question is specifically asking about plants, then we're going to go with plasmodesmata, which is choice D. The molecules diffuse freely through plasmodesmata. And this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.